We've got Christian in Georgia. Oh, wow. Pronouncer right. him, uh, who has, I, uh, oh. it, it, just says, it, it just says objections to the idea of hell in the Bible. So maybe we agree. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. Oh, well, I have to ask you about that, actually. But uh, first of all, I didn't know you had hundreds of rats. That's very, I never knew that about you. I, uh, I have 60 but, yeah. some odd snakes, and so they have to eat. That's radical. Um, so, yeah, I'm a Christian. Uh, I shouldn't surprise you, given the name. But um, whenever, I, you know, a lot of... Um, I wrote the I'm Gospel not, I'm, of I'm Matthew. Kind of when it comes I to, shouldn't like, surprise you, given the name. Well, um, one, one, I, oh, one kind of objection to Christianity that I hear a lot is, like, in specific... How would I say it? Specifically, the idea of hell being kind of like immoral or like bad. Um, I would personally argue, which is why I'm here, I would argue that the idea of hell is like, if you take your feelings out of it and kind of look at the big picture, it makes, not only it, not only does it make sense, but I think it's really like one of the only kind of thing that can make sense in terms of like an afterlife or like a dichotomy of like where you'll go. But uh, basically my question so, for you guys is why, like, what are your objections to hell? Um, if you have some, like, why is it, so, why is it um, unappetizing perhaps? Well, first of all, I think when you say you, you take, when you take your feelings out of it, um, I, yeah. sure. When you take your feelings out of it, nothing's bad, right? Are you asking me seriously? He's making yeah. an amazing point, Christian. I, I didn't know. I thought that was a rhetorical question, but sure. Yeah. Well, well, when your argument begins with "let's take our feelings out of it," you might as well. You, hey, I'm, I believe in God, but let's take evidence out of it. I mean, that's that's what this comes down to. And so, well, not here. Let me ask you. I'm asking like. No, no, no. It it is. Okay. But let me ask you this. Um, I'm on a delay. Who so goes to hell? If I spend my life doing good things, um, and you know. I just don't happen to believe that Jesus is Lord. Do I go to hell? Mm -hmm. And you think that's um, a good thing? In the, I, in the yeah, in the Christian worldview, first of all, no one's good, right? There's no no man's good, no not one. But secondly, I understand. If you don't believe the gospel, then yeah, you would go to hell. Okay, and what happens to me in hell? Um, well. It's definitely not something good, but basically it's an eternal kind of regret, mental anguish. So, but you said that torment. was a good thing. You, you, you started off by saying that it was a good thing, and now you said nothing good. So which is it? Well, going to hell isn't good, but I think the idea of hell being a punishment for evil is good. It's, it's just, okay. rather, we'll say that. So, so if you and I live a life where we we do roughly the same amount of good things and mm -hmm. evil things where we harm just the same number of people and we help the same number of people and then you mm -hmm. believe uh this credulous claim that jesus is divine and i don't you go on to mm -hmm. heaven and i go to hell and you think that this system is good what's good about it oh yeah that's easy yeah the the reason why the reason why hell makes sense is because it's kind of it's kind of like a two or threefold thing I was, if i remember the third one then you know threefold but one is that god is just right like in the christian worldview you can argue against it you know some other time but in the christian worldview god is perfectly holy he's infinitely holy in fact and he has and by doing so by virtue he has to punish evil right so you know, that's one reason why hell makes sense is because God has to punish evil once and for all. And, you know, no sin should go unpunished. Secondly, the reason why hell makes sense is because, and, and the reason why it's not, they will say morally dubious is because it's very simple to avoid it. Um, essentially the idea of hell is it's something which okay. we all deserve because pause. we're all sinners. Yeah, I'm stuck uh, on I need, I need you to pause. The second reason. I, I need you to pause because I asked you, I gave you okay. a scenario, and I said, you think this system is good, where if you and I live, let's just say, roughly equivalent lives, 
that and you believe mm -hmm. and I don't that me going to hell mm -hmm. is a good thing and you say it's a good thing because God is perfectly just and all sin no sin should go unpunished but your sins went unpunished yeah. exactly. and there's nothing just no. about no no, no. There, there's, absolutely not no. What do you mean, absolutely not? Well, he believes in forgiveness by proxy. So Jesus was punished for his sins. He's not going to be punished for them, but you will be punished for I, yours well, for not I believing. Could, I, I understand that. I, I believe the say, same thing. You know, but what I'm, my oh, my God. You. Never, never fucking mind. My... Never fucking mind. Well, I mean, if I'm not going to finish a fucking sentence without you fucking interrupt me with your terrible fucking idea about what justice is, then why should I fucking talk to you? Oh, I apologize, Matt. Don't, you know. I, I wanted to speak on behalf of my worldview instead of the other gentleman, but I'm asking you, know, you questions. Go ahead. I, I'm asking. Oh, you're going to let me finish? <laughs> you're going to let me finish? Are you going to let me finish? Tell Go me you're going to let me finish one more motherfucking time. Okay. Now, first of all, your idea is that God is perfectly just, and that is why hell makes sense. But why is it perfectly just for two people? who've had the same impact on society, and the same values, for one of them to be sent to heaven, and one of them to be sent to hell, where the only disparaging criteria, the only difference in the criteria, is whether or not someone is convinced of mm -hmm. the divinity of Jesus. What about not being convinced mm -hmm. of the divinity of Jesus is so evil that it requires one to be tortured forever? What is just about that? Yeah, so the idea of not accepting the or not trusting in the divinity of christ it whether it's, i guess you would say it's sinful right but it's essentially the idea that you're choosing to personally take in the penalty of sin whereas i'm trusting in jesus to give me his imputed righteousness on me so no. it's not that i'm less deserving of hell because we all deserve it right but no, we don't. Doing, None of us fucking right. deserve you're it. That's choosing. part of the problem. But okay, Paul, here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to mute you. And then I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And then I'll unmute you. You're saying, I asked specifically why not believing was evil enough to deserve eternal torment. And your answer was, I'm choosing to take on the penalty of sin. No. I'm not convinced that sin is a real concept. I'm not convinced there should be a penalty for it. I am not convinced that substitutionary atonement is real. I'm not convinced of divinity. See, you can't say that it makes sense if you accept the doctrine when I don't accept the doctrine. And so what is it that is just about torturing someone forever for failing to believe the doctrine? Mm -hmm. Um, first of all, again, I'm on a delay, so I apologize. No, don't blame the upset. don't blame the delay. When the show started, Matt had only said your name and was continuing the sentence, and you began talking. You are an eager to jump in person. Just own that. Is there going to be a delay that will occasionally cause issues? Sure. We had the delay down to a regular phone call. You've used the phone okay. before. You, it, you do not blame your eagerness to jump in. On the delay, period. Do you need me now to repeat right. the question? Well, I, I live in I live in the woods, so it it, it is a frequent thing. So, um, doesn't account for why but, you started talking over him at the very beginning do, of the call. Do you need to me to repeat the question? If you would like to, please go ahead. I just I okay. How is eternal torment for not accepting a doctrine <clears throat> justified? Is justified, as I said earlier, because God has to punish evil. If he didn't punish evil, then he would be unjust. What is evil about not believing something? Oh, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Um, it's not that. It's not that disbelief is evil intrinsically. It's that by doing so, you're kind of. I mean, it's unavoidable, really. By not believing in it, you're also choosing to accept the penalty of your own sin you're basically putting yourself under the law no there in that your so argument that you man. just made you, the argument that you just made right there is assuming that i accept that there is sin and punishment and all that i don't accept the doctrine how is that evil and how is that deserving of eternal punishment 
Um, well, I'm, I'm talking in the, in the, internally in the Christian worldview. If I don't, I mean, you're being accepted of it. I, it could be real yeah. and not real. That doesn't change anything, Jesus right? Like, Christ. Wow. Do, do you not realize I'm, that I'm, I was a fundamentalist kind of a Christian? Lost, for, do you not realize that I was a fundamentalist Christian who believed all this shit to begin with? You don't get to start with oh, belief and say it's justified. You don't get to start with belief and say it's justified belief because then you might as well be arguing God gets to do whatever God wants to do. But that makes him a bully. It doesn't make him moral. How is it just to punish someone for merely being unconvinced of a doctrine when God has failed to provide evidence for the veracity of that doctrine? Okay. Um, I'll try to answer it this way, perhaps. It, it is, I think, a bit fallacious when people think that everyone is judged right, the same way, right? Um, because the Bible does say something different. I'm sure, Matt, you would know about that, Romans 1. Um, those who haven't heard, people who aren't accountable, you know, things like that. So just because you aren't convinced, you know, as you say, of the gospel, that doesn't always mean that you'll always go to hell, because that's not always true for But you did tell cases. Matt earlier in the call that he will go to hell for not believing if the difference between you and him is just the not believing. So you're now contradicting yourself, oh, yeah, so let's get Matt back into You said the difference. He's diff able-bodied, he's intelligent. What does that have to do with anything? Jesus Christ. Let him keep digging. What, the reason great. why I bring that up is because that, that's the age of like, accountability. If you're not accountable, if you haven't heard the gospel before, God is going to send you to hell for not, for not knowing what the gospel is. And if you're a baby and you die, he's not going to send you to hell because you don't know what the gospel is. So that's why I mentioned accountability. Where, Matt is accountable so first of all, where's he that? knows about Christ. Sorry? Where, where is that doctrine? Uh, if you read the book of Romans, it'll lay it out for you. No, it doesn't actually. But how do you know that's true? See, you're, you're acting as if you are acting as if hearing the gospel is the same thing as being presented with sufficient evidence to accept the gospel. You are acting as if being presented with a doctrine is identical to mm -hmm. having sufficient warrant to believe the doctrine. I've been presented with the doctrine. I know it backwards and forwards. I've studied it all of my life. I'm not convinced mm -hmm. that it's true. And the people, mm -hmm. despite me for 20 years asking for people to demonstrate that it's true, have been able to present nothing but fallacies and emotional appeals mm -hmm. that don't reference evidence. Where is God? Why can't okay. God demonstrate this is true? And how can it possibly be just to punish someone for not believing when there's insufficient evidence? Sure. Um, I'll answer your first question about like, how can we demonstrate God? Um, I would need to clarify, like, what evidence would you be looking for, like, empirical for some reason, or like, an argument, perhaps? No, I'm Christian, one, why don't you historical? do the work? How about you come up with the evidence and not ask us I'm to do your fucking homework you expect, for you? Like, what are you looking for? I you're, have no idea. I've for. answered it. Stop. I've answered this a million times. I don't know what evidence would convince me, but if there is a God, God should know what evidence would convince me, and God has failed to present that. Either way, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. It's not my problem. I have no way of knowing what sort of evidence could and should demonstrate the truth of a God. But you think that you have sufficient mm -hmm. evidence for belief in a God. So instead of asking me what would convince me, why don't you demonstrate what convinced you? And then I can either say, aha, yeah. I agree. You have good standards of evidence. I'm now convinced. Or here's your problem. All right. That that kind of takes away the burden on you right but um i could do that sure there is um, no fucking burden <laughs> on me no shit. I'm a, look if you look, don't have a look shut up i do not have a burden of proof the claim that god exists has a burden of proof just like the claim the loch ness monster exists has a burden of proof just like the claim that bigfoot exists has a burden of proof the fact that i don't know what would convince me doesn't change the fact that you are fucking convinced you have a standard of proof that you think is reasonable that you are now convinced by instead of dancing around and trying to blame me saying i'm shifting the burden of proof why don't you meet the burden of proof, which you already fucking have? Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm yeah. sorry, sir, but if, if you don't know what evidence would convince you, I can't help you. 
Like it's just me. Goodbye it's then. Goodbye. Me, I can't Goodbye. help you. Okay, Goodbye. Bye. Bye. You can't help anybody bye. because you you are a coward who Be won't who won't present the evidence for why you believe. Yeah, you hung up. Run away, bitch. Of course. Run away. Literally, when asked what evidence convinced you, he goes with what would convince you back. That wasn't the question. Do your own work and stop weaponizing your fucking ignorance, you goddamn boob. I can't help you. You're Just correct. Kidding. You can't. You know why you can't? Because you don't listen. Yeah. You can't help me because you don't have good standards of evidence. You can't help me because you won't present the evidence that convinced you that you think should be convincing to other people. You want to try to figure out, ah, I'm not, this ain't my fucking first day at this job. Yeah. What you're trying to do is you want me to say, I would need evidence like this. And then you can say, well, that's your problem. You're just too skeptical. You have standards of evidence that are just too high. God's not going to meet that because blah, 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 blah. I've been down this road for 20 years, pretty much, or 19 and a half years. I've been down this over and over and over again. I'm fucking 10 yards better understanding in this than you have ever been, and you're a little coward. Oh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You couldn't present an argument for how, how hell is justified or how God is just. All you did was say that God is perfectly moral. Well, that's an unfounded fucking assertion. It's not yeah. an argument or evidence. All you did was say that no sin should go unpunished, but you failed to acknowledge that all of your sins go unpunished because you buy into the concept of substitutionary atonement, as if your sins don't have to be punished because God can choose to forgive you whether you deserve it or not. But why wouldn't God choose to forgive someone who honestly, does not accept the doctrine. God should be able to forgive whoever he wants. You have a train wreck of epistemology and a train wreck of Christian doctrine that I used to share, and you can sit there and smugly go the, I can't help you, I know, and you know what? I can't help you because Christianity has poisoned your brain to the point where you won't listen to reason, you won't defend your positions, you cannot give answers that aren't just spewing up, vomiting up the fact that you accept a doctrine. Well, congratulations, you accept the doctrine that I accepted once upon a time, and now I don't, because I learned why I shouldn't, and you haven't learned that yet. You could have if you'd have been willing to present your case so yeah. that I could answer it, but instead you decided to turn it around and make it about me. It ain't about me. You're the one with the God belief. You're the one with the burden of proof. I don't have a burden of proof to show that God doesn't exist. Hell yeah. If you're one of the 2,400 people watching right now, click that like button for seven years of unchanged luck. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow. I'm the executive producer of The Line. And at night, I sneak into Matt Dillahunty's house and I trade his cereals for other cereals. He comes out and he's like, wait, I, these are cereals I buy, but I swear I had different cereals. Anyway, would you like to support this channel or any specific show? You can do so over on Patreon or in channel memberships. There are special tiers for special shows or for the channel at large, and it helps us expand programming as well as hopefully very soon launch it in podcast form. Now, also, if you'd like to support, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment or a super thanks, which is a special highlighted comment that you pay for. Those are fun. And, you know, Screw the algorithm. Go check out something over here, I suppose. Boy, I hope I can still put those icons there, because if I can't, this is going to look really stupid. I'm going to go buy some Cocoa Puffs and switch out Matt's mini-wheats now.